And how many are, are excited that this is the last Sunday in 2020? <laughs> Amen. Uh, today we're going to be talking about vision. Uh, vision. Today is Vision Sunday. And um, as we are, are quickly approach 2021, uh, today I'll be sharing uh, just some, some things w- uh, that we feel God is, is going to take us in, and lead us in 2021. God is so good. And, and uh, as I was here during worship, I was reminded um, that God allows you to see some things first. He lets you see things, and that's what vision is. You see something before it exists. Before something exists, you get to see it. And uh, there's some of you who are, are naturally gifted in this area. You're creative, and you're able to see some things before they come to pass. And even in the, the last few weeks, I got to see that happen right before my eyes, where something comes to life that perhaps I didn't see, but somebody had a vision for it. In other words, everything you see here, everything you're able to touch, everything you're able to feel, somebody saw it before it came into existence. Are you with me? And so, for instance, somebody walks in a living room and sees an empty room, right? Uh, And that's all they see. It's an empty living room. But somebody else comes in and they see it and they see, oh, man, I can see a sofa right there. Or no, a sofa belongs over here, right? Or somebody else comes in, they have a vision for the room and they say, uh, it should have white alabaster walls and it should have a, a beautiful brown leather couch and some green velvet Uh, chairs that match some green velvet uh, curtains, right? And I see a beautiful white area rug on this beautiful hardwood floor. And and then I see some portraits, some black and white portraits of the family on the wall because they have a vision for the room. And then all of a sudden, when all that stuff comes together, the vision comes to life. But some of us just go in the room and see it's an empty living room. Somebody else comes in with a vision, and they see this amazing room. And the room I'm describing is the room that my wife created in our living room. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now, I look, man, it looks like a magazine. It looks amazing. I, I can never have that vision for the room. But she had the vision for the room, and God has a vision for this church. He sees this church with green velvet chairs, right, and a beautiful area rug. He, he has a plan and a vision for this church. And, and as we move into 2021, he wants us to walk in these promises that he has for us in order for us to see that vision. And today I'm going to pause just for a moment because uh, how many love this church? Yeah. Well, I, I love this church, too. I think my son said it when he was up here. We love this church. But there was somebody who saw this church before I saw it, right? God saw it. He knew this church was going to exist. Uh, but there was somebody who saw this church before Pastor Mark saw it. So about 10 years ago, a friend of mine, my dearest friend, told me, Mark, I see a church. We're going to be pastors at this church. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be in Philly. And he saw it before I saw it. And I kind of chuckled at him and said, all right, you know, who knows, maybe that will happen. But he had a vision that God showed him this church before I saw it. And so my friend who saw the church, he passed away. But today I'm honored because his son is here today. And so I just want to honor you, Isaiah. Uh, his father was Miguel Vargas, my dearest friend. And Miguel saw the church before I saw the church. But I'm honored to have Isaiah here because this is part of your legacy. Right? This is part of your legacy. And so I want to say that publicly, (laughs) because we serve a faithful God. He's good all the time. And so whatever vision, if you would just clear out your mind (laughs) and give him some room, he'll start giving you vision of what it's supposed to look like. Your marriage, your life, your home, your neighborhood, our city. And so God has placed a vision in this church for the city of Philadelphia. And so I'm excited about that today. And um, I guess I won't have notes, but we'll just play it by ear because I guess that's what God wants today. Um, So can we put the scripture up there? This is the verse that we'll be using in 2021. It says this, 2 Peter 1, verse 3 and 4, it says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. 
God has given us everything we need. Sometimes we think we need more, but we have everything we need. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to sh- and me to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. If we could just leave it up there just for a moment. Because, see, there's promises that God has for your life. He has for my life. He has for this church. There's promises for us that allow us to partake or be participants in his divine nature. And so as we walk into 2021, which we are calling the year of the promise, the promises that we're going to begin to walk in are divine promises. They're not promises that we make up, that we just thought up and got in a room and wrote down. No, these are things that God is leading us to these promises in order to start making the vision a reality, right? So let's think about that living room. We got... The, the, she, my wife saw the, the leather couch. I, I didn't see nothing. All right? I didn't see nothing in the room. She saw a leather couch. All right, that's part, that's part of the promise that leads to the vision of the whole room, right? And so there's these promises that I'm going to be sharing today that are going to help us begin to form the vision that God has for the church. In other words, the vision, let me tell you, the vision never ends. So that room is done, right? Well, <laughs> But the vision continues. Now there's a vision for the dining room, right, and for the kitchen. And so uh, as we're talking about these promises today or these things that we're about to walk in, church, uh, that vision begins to expand. Are you guys still with me today? In other words, God is limitless, right? So that vision continues to get bigger and clearer as we walk in it, right? But it takes us, takes a little bit of faith to believe, yes. It takes you to give up some things, right? Sometimes it's some relationships, some negative things that we're surrounded by. Because to, in order to walk in the promises, there's some things that we got to let go. In order to live out those promises or receive those promises and start walking in the vision that God has for us, there's alignment that's necessary. We have to align ourselves with the vision giver, <laughs> As we align ourselves with God, all of a sudden, we can start walking out in these promises that start giving life to the vision. So I'm excited about that today. I'll be sharing about nine uh, things that we believe are either going to happen in 2021 or are going to be birthed in 2021. And so these nine things, some of you may say, oh, that's kind of far-fetched, Pastor. I'm not sure about that. But I'll tell you this. It's not about how we're going to do it, it's about who's going to do it with us, right? Because life, if, if you don't take nothing else, and maybe you're just visiting us and you'll never come here, then that's fine. But take this with you. It's not about what you know or how smart you are. It's about who you are connected with. It's about who you're connected. God is about networking and relationship. And so, in order for you to be successful in life, whatever you, however you define that success, there's, you need other people. You need other people. We were never intended to do this alone. And so I'm so glad you're here today. And I know the Holy Spirit has already been speaking to many of you. As you hear these promises that we'll talk, these nine items, as you hear them, some of them are going to, some of you are, are, are something's going to begin to stir inside of you. And you'll say, that's for me. I'm part of that. Some, that's going to start to stir in you. And some may say, no, I'm not really part of that. And that's fine because we just want, it's not that we don't love you. We still love you. But we believe that God has already ordained some of you to be part of this vision, right, for this season of your life. Uh, and, and so I'm excited about that today. And so um, let's just go, let's just go to, the, to those items. We'll go. Let's just jump right in. The first one. Establish a support uh, network of churches. We believe that God wants to use this church to help other churches, right? And so we've already been approached, Pastor Francisco, on the Spanish side and, and myself by pastors or churches say, hey, how are you guys doing this? What do you guys do? And, how? and we help them because everything we have received freely, we give away. 
as a church. So as churches come, we just share it with them. How do you do this? And how do you do that? And so we don't tell them how to do it. We just say, this is how we do it. And you can have it if you want. You could change it if you want. But we believe that we've been called to oversee some, some pastors and some churches. Because being a pastor is not easy. And we're blessed because we get to do it together. But most pastors are alone. So we believe that we're called to start this network. And so you'll be seeing that. It's, I'm not sure the name, but we know that's going to happen. Number two, start a nonprofit. not looking at nobody, but um, I believe that there'll be nonprofits, plural, that'll be birthed out of this church. Uh, and I believe there'll be four profits that'll be uh, birthed out of this church as well. Number three, there's nine of them. We're going to pay off the building. So I'm going I'm to I'm stay here for a little bit because you could be a part of this. <laughs> So we owe about approximately $300,000 on the building. And, um, and we were in a meeting, the, the board, and, which is uh, Pastor Francisco and a few uh, other board members, and we were sitting there. It was a long board retreat, about five hours maybe. Right? And we're sitting there, and we're talking about the debt of the church. And we have two loans. One is a, a $40,000 loan that we owe. The other one's about $260,000, which is about $300,000. And we said, man, if we could pay the $40,000 this year, that would be great. <laughs> And the meeting kept going on and on and on. And towards the end of the meeting, um, Pastor Vanessa jumps up. She said, if I don't say this, my heart is going to explode. My heart is going to come out of my chest. That's what she said. I, she said, we're going to pay the building off. And we all looked at her like, what? And she said, the Lord just showed me. She, he showed me how we're going to pay it off. We need 300 people to give $1,000 each in 2021, and the building gets paid off. And we said... So something that seemed impossible, right, seemed impossible, all of a sudden we said, man, that, that might be able to happen. Hey, because, see, God doesn't complicate things. But it was a, it's a God idea, and she made it, and the Lord kept speaking to her. He already showed me, she said, it's $82 a month for 12 months, and, we, and that's $1,000. Or $20 a week, and that's $1,000 for you know, and so what my son was saying, he didn't know, I mean, I didn't know he was going to say that, but what he said today, when you give, it's an act of faith, right? So when we're think, we're believing for 300 people, and we've already had a few people sign up, we're believing three between both campuses, and the thing about it, these 300 people, we know we don't have to beg them because the Holy Spirit's going to touch them. We don't have to beg them. And if you're the person say, I don't believe that's going to happen and that's not for me, then really you should not be a part of it. You really shouldn't. Um, but if you feel the Holy Spirit touching you and tugging at your heart to be part of it, then you should be obedient and be part of it. Uh, but don't focus on the 300 people because if you do, you won't, you'll get overwhelmed. You just focus on what you're supposed to do. And so, you know, I shared this, you know, in a meeting and, um, and I know God has already touched some people to give more than the 1000 you know. And we could go outside and ask some people, and I know some people will give. And I've shared it with a few of my friends who already said, I'm, I'm in. And I was shocked. But I also know that we have a responsibility in this house to do it. We have a responsibility to pay this building off because this is the house that God has led us to be in or to be part of. And so and we'll talk about how you can be a part of that as we move forward uh, but I'm excited because by faith, our building is going to be paid off in 2021. I want to be very clear. We are not, we're not paying the building off so that we can just fill up the bank account. We are paying the building off so that we can acquire more properties and more territory for the kingdom of God. The city <laughs> needs a church to rise up and start taking territory. Physical territory in the city. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. It's not a Mark idea, a Pastora Vanessa. This is a God idea. God birthed this church to take territory. And I've talked about this. This church was not birthed to do church. It was birthed to slay giants. We have some giant slayers in the house, and there's some more on the way. So this is not 
<laughs> but I know that this is a start. This is a start. We're going to pay the building off. And I know he's touching some of y'all already. Um, and at first I was like, man, that's a lot of people, 300. But, you know, Gideon started with like 30,000. He just and it ended up with 300, right, 300. And we're looking for 300 warriors. Some of them might be in the same house where a wife says, man, Pap, honey, I'm going to do it by faith. And the husband says, I'm going to do it as well. Maybe it's a, a, a young person in the house or even a child says, I'm going to save my allowance and I'm going to be part of this. Amen. All right, number four is we're going to start hiring some people in the church. So we need, we need people here um, uh, physically during the day. So it's not just two or three of us, but we, um, so we're believing for that. We don't have all the details, but we know in 2021 some people will be hired here. Number five, spiritual and personal development for you guys, for all of us. What does this mean is we, we feel like the, the church, everybody needs to know what's next, right? What is next in my journey? And so in this church, you, you want to be part of the church, you, you participate in growth track. After that, we say then you should part, do a six-week course or eight-week course called Fresh Start. And then we want to add some things on there. We're believing for a Bible school to be added to that in 2021 or be in, at least birthed. We're believing for um, <laughs> a Bible school. We're believing for a, a leadership school. And, and, and we'll have more details on that. But we want you guys to have a journey of what's next, of what's next. And we go ahead next, number six, church expansion. Church expansion, what does that mean? Yeah, maybe at some point we're going to need another building, and that's fine. But we believe that we, um, we are also going to plant some churches, some campuses, and plant some churches. And because that's, for some of you, that's what's next, right? We believe that some of you will go lead a campus or perhaps plant a church, and some people from here will go to be part of that next. And so that's number six. Number seven, release a song. Or a cover. So, so we believe our worship team will, will re, you know, we've been blessed by some amazing worshipers. And, and um, some of them who gave up on this probably a long time ago. But God has revived that dream. And so we're believing for a unique sound uh, and songs that will come out of this place that will bless uh, the kingdom of God. Number eight, Connect Up is our, our prayer. Inner, it's a prayer ministry. And we've been doing this for a while, but it will be actually officially open on February 27th. February 27th, we're going to cut a ribbon and we're going to give open opening uh, the grand opening for Connect Up, and it'll be on Allegheny Avenue. We're excited for that one. And number nine, a billboard. I want to talk about this. So... When I drive up and down 95, and I don't, I don't do it often, I try and avoid it, but when I'm on 95, I look at the billboards, and they're all negative. And some of them use curse words, right? Some of them say, if you need a divorce, die, you know, call this person. If you need a good lawyer, and very, a lot of negative stuff, right? If you want to get drunk, here's what you buy beer, and all this negative stuff. And I'm like, man, how come it can't say something good? Like, and I believe our church should put a bill, billboard right there by Allegheny Avenue on 95, and... Maybe one way it'll be in English, the other way it'll be in Spanish. I don't know. But this is what I believe the billboard should say. And I don't have the perfect wording. I think Terrell does. But it's going to say something like this. God isn't done with you, Philly. Greater is coming. Because I believe our city needs hope. Our city needs to know that. God is still for the city of Philadelphia. He still believes in the region of, of this that we live in. And, and he birthed this church to make a difference in this city. Not just so we could come and feel good and have church. But he birthed it that so that some warriors would rise up, discover their purpose, begin to make a difference difference and see his vision come to life in our city. I'm believing for a day without a murder. I'm believing for a week without a murder. I'm believing for a month without a murder in our city. Church, if you believe with me, could you just stand in this place today? Church, I want to tell you there's more. There's more. God is too big 
to get limited to what we're used to. See, there's vision that he's placed inside of you, but you got to begin to discover it. And you discover it as you align yourself with him. We got to stop being so selfish. Start being selfless. Say, God, my plan, I flush it down the toilet and I receive your new plan. My vision is too small in comparison to your vision for my life, my family, my relationships, my marriage, my home, my neighborhood, my place of employment. If you have me there, I want to be effective. I want to stop complaining about it. I want to embrace what you've given me. And I want to be that warrior, that light, that salt that you created me to be. And I believe in this house, he's stirring, he's stirring, he's stirring in your hearts. And so I want to pray. If we could just close our eyes. I just want you to take this moment and meditate on what God is trying to do through your life. If you don't see much, then you need clarity because there's more. So Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit of God, would you begin to open our hearts? In our minds. God, would you give us clarity, God, to begin to see, Lord, your way, your plan, your vision for our lives, God. Not our vision, God, but that amazing, beautiful vision that you have for us. Lord, I thank you, God, for these nine things, because I know there's more after this, God. Or even in between all of this, there's more. I thank you for it. I thank you, God. I know, God, I know, God, that this building will get paid off. I don't need to know how. I just need to know it will. So I thank you for it in advance. I thank you, Lord, for all those things and more that are yet to come through your grace, your power, your love, your resources. You are our source. So we put our faith in you and we believe. We believe. I pray that over every person here, God. God, that you would begin, Lord, to just birth something new in our hearts as we go into 2021. Where there was hopelessness, that hope would arise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit pray this in the most powerful name of Jesus, that name above all names. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. We declare all of these things. They will come to pass, Lord. We will see them. We will touch them, God. All for the expansion and the glory of your kingdom, God, through us. The vessels that you are mending and healing and fixing, God, and thank you, Lord, and I just honor you like never before. In Jesus' name, amen.